Well, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. My last bit of a, uh, as I told you before, this is my favorite unsweetened almond cashew and macadamia nut beverage, right? And you know what doesn't have, you know, it has water, almonds, cashews, macadamias, calcium carbonate, sea salt, locust, bean, gum, sunflower, lethid, whatever that is, natural flavor, and some Jalilian gum. <laughs> uh, that's all. I ain't got no sugar. It was unsweet. I ain't got no sugar in it. And uh, since I can't get it any, you know, I can't even get up the place in the United States to get from Trader Joe's. See, Trader Joe's. I'm not advertising. I'm just trying to say that's my favorite thing. This is the last one they had on the shelf when I was right there. The one on uh, whatever it is, Columbus Avenue. Is it Columbus? Whatever. Yeah, Columbus. Uh, but what I didn't tell you, <laughs> you know, uh, it's some, well, when you have your sweet, well, I usually put, you know, mix it up with some chocolate, but not this time. Let's do it straight, right? But what I didn't tell you, what you could do, nutmeg. You know, take some nutmeg and one, two, I'm a three kind of person. Three little dashes of nutmeg and that's how you drink it, you know? Nutmeg's good for you, you know? So anyway, I was speaking about nutmeg. Okay, hey, lights. Speaking about nutmeg. Now, I got a new thing. Not a new thing. I love this book so much. Let me tell you that when I'm reading and I really like a book, and I, it's just, I, I get fast, so, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, so I slow down because I want to make the, the feeling last. Now, this, I started reading when I, about three weeks ago, whatever it is. I'm up to like here, like I did that much. But the thing is, the book, because it has. It has, uh, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, maybe it's back, it's, yeah, it has epilogue and uh, some uh, appendix or whatever have you. So basically, I have this much more to read, right? But here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I don't want to finish it. So what I'm going to do is I read some more, you know, before I leave, you know, with, I'm gonna leave here about 7.30, it's like two o'clock now, so five more hours. So I read a little bit, but I don't want to, I'll, I'll hold it. I've read enough because uh, this is really, like I said, the difference between a, a, a biographer, a, uh, what do you call them people, a historian, academic, whatever, when they when they write, they, you know, they, they do some research, but they, they do on other people's, you know, other people, then they just build on that. But this is written by Les Payne and, and his daughter, uh, uh, finish it because he passed. Um, but uh, he's an investigative reporter. Now, investigative reporter journalists, they do this differently. You know what I mean? They don't just settle. They don't just build. Somebody else did something like three books down the line. You're repeating some. You get some little tidbit. You know, you're not doing any research. I mean, they do, the so-called research they do is just, well, it's not what you, what you do. So an investigative reporter, when they're like a real journalist, when they do something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll stop wherever, right? some logical point and then what I will do is when I come back like in July I'll pick it up you see see how that works what can I tell you you know so I'll leave this here plus nobody want to read it anyway so I'll leave it on the shelf here right now oh but I did yesterday oh man see I'm such a sucker man I'm a sucker for books I can't help it I, I've curved my whatever last few years but still okay yesterday I was uh, I was I was hanging with Steve, whatever. You know, don't worry. Go ahead and get my uh, uh, rare copies of, of, of films from, you know, like, see, so yeah. all these DVDs. <laughs> Take them out of the sleeve, put them like that, and so that I'll have them. Um, and, you know, my, where I go, there's no there's no movie theater. There's no, <laughs> I live in a village, right? And so, well, the kids, you know, the kids will love the movies I get, whatever, have them, we'll talk about them, stuff like that. Uh, but I was there, and then I was up there. It was good. He's always had some somebody or some character up there, and and we were just talking. I was telling, oh yeah, I was telling him the book I'm reading now, the book that I'm taking with me, right? I'm leaving the um, no, the, the Malcolm X book, but I am carrying. I'm doing this book here. This is what I'm reading on a plane, and when I go down to South Africa now, this is. My book for this for this month or whatever have you, the dawning of the apocalypse. This is the book by Gerald Horn, 
and uh, tells you the roots of slavery, white supremacy, settler colonialism, and capitalism in the long 16th century. Okay, so this is the book. Okay, so I was, so I was, so I was telling the guy, he said, oh, Joe Hunt was just, he was just here. Well, not here, up, up the thing, he was just on 125th Street. I said, Joe, what? I ran out. Because, <laughs> you know, Joe was, in, Joe was in Texas now. And, uh, you know, so, of course, he was, he was gone, you know what I mean? But I was I was quite excited for a little bit, you know? Um, but then it got, well, anyway, so, you know, not making. But isn't that something? Joe Hunt should appear, you know, and well, whatever. But as I ran out for him, I was looking for well, well I couldn't find his hunt Frank Street. So there was this guy by the Adam Clayton Powell Jr. I can't I hate saying that. This Harlem State Office Building. <laughs> if you know the history, you say you know you understand what I'm saying. Harlem State Office Building. You no, know, they had the vendors out there. I know one of the guys wrong whatever have you. But then there was this how do you say character, you know, this dude, he was selling some some off books or whatever it is. And he was doing just, he was like wordsmithing, you know, he was wordsmithing. You know, everybody was, two guys were standing around there, but he just doing, he was in his zone, right? And somewhere in there, he was still talking about numbers. And this book was on the, on his table, right? And I, and I said, uh, well, what's the number on this book? But the way, you have to be there, the way it flowed, everybody, the other two brothers, they just stopped. Oh, that was deep, because I just went right into his rhythm. Come, you know, what's the number of this book, right? Basically, because then nothing was going to stop this brother from waxing, wordsmithing, let's put it that way. But um, but I wanted this book, and this is uh, Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. Um, Mulebone, Mulebone, they did, actually, they did it. Michael Schultz was doing it as a, uh, I think this year, I think he was doing it as a uh, uh, a play at, uh, is that Lincoln Center? So we, I think at Lincoln Center. And so, I, uh, a, a comedy of Negro life is what it was called. Let's see the book. And uh, interesting enough, this top this book was brought up about a few days ago, whatever happened. I actually stumbled across it, so I actually I had to buy it because that's that's the way I roll. If something sort of happens, it comes to me. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this to South Africa with me, and um, I might be able to work some because there's some some scenes and stuff like that. I might be able to work something um, with the kids and, and deal with them with that. So that's interesting enough. Uh, but why am I talking to you? Oh, because I'm 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 getting some stuff together. Uh, first of all, little tips from travel. Uh, first of all, when I go back, I'm only uh, this these shoes here, right? These are very whatever shoes. They say, oh, I should wear this South Africa. Nope, I will not. I will leave these here. Okay, I'll leave these here these in the bag here. I'll leave this here when I come back. You know, this will this will all be in one, all my stuff. And I'm leaving here all my stuff, mainly clothing. This right here will be in this bag here. And if you notice this bag, if you know the colors and whatever have you. This is one of those original uh, polo bags. I got this in the '80s. I can't explain to you. You you know by the color, uh, color got like twenty. You know, twenty polo used to be the old little outlet used to be Twenty Third Street, right where that triangle buildings on Twenty Third Street. Um, Anyway, they used to be there, and I guess so I use this as a holding bag these days. Uh, let me leave that down there, just so you know I'm authentic. <laughs> but um, as I, these I just got, these are like uh, those compression socks, like that, right? Because when you travel on uh, planes and stuff and trains and stuff like that, you know, you, you might swell up. I, I don't do it that much because of what I eat and stuff like that. But I'm going to use this now because I'm going to plane travel a bit of heavy. So I'm going to use that. And when I travel too, I will be using... Oh, here it is. Um, be comfortable. These are like, these socks here are like, uh, you know, really, you know, padded or whatever. Comfortable. So I use that. Then uh, these are wool. These are wool socks that I use. They're all beat up, whatever heavy. I use it as an over sock. You know, like I'm planning to give you a, a, some... Some little thing that we know I use this so that's that will be happening there um, oh let me show you these pants here my pants I'm currently wearing these pants here if you notice I don't know why they do this now but they got some sort of when you they, they get sort of fade I don't know I don't know what what, what they do but it's sort of the, the fade that it does like a rust color it's gonna match the t-shirt that I'm wearing. I'm wearing I just got this from 
Morrissey in a section of the Bronx. Griffin up here, bit of So I'm gonna wear this. It all sort of goes, goes together. And uh, I'll wear this hat. And that'll be the, that one there, it all match like that. But here's the trick. What I wanted to show you, um, my footwear. This is interesting. I bought these a few years ago in Virginia. This is hemp. These are, this is made out of hemp. Right now, got the no inserts there. I actually had it redone. I just had it redone in uh, in Virginia. And these are, so this is what I'll actually wear on the uh, on the plane. Look at that. You know, let me show you something here. You see, there's like a little nick out of that thing, like that. You know, it's done by a stupid in the garden. In Cape, in the garden route, when you're going from Cape Town to to the east to the eastern Cape, there's this thing called a garden route. Very, very lovely. One of the places on there, this is like a, a sanctuary, a bird sanctuary, a monkey sanctuary, some other thing like that. But it's at the bird place, and that's and one of those parrots come and start eating on my thing. It's, oh, well, anyway, anyway, the point is, I wear these, so I'm going to the airport. I wear any of I bring these shoes. But these are shoes I wear. He said, "Why do, you do that, brother? Because I have shoes. I remember, I live in South. Have shoes there, you know." And I have shoes in St. Louis, I have shoes in Virginia, and I have shoes here. I'll leave those other ones here. Um, but this is just very comfortable. Uh, and when you travel, what happens? People look at your feet to see what kind of shoes you're wearing. You know. Now the the, the say the brothers in in uh, South in Southern Africa, like saying Zambia and stuff like that, all over they wear those shoes. You know, those pointy, almost like a pointy shoes. Which to me is stupid, but this, that's what they wear. Everybody wants to go fly, whatever have it. Okay, great. Um, but I don't do that. I wear, like I say, I wear those shoes. Easy to get off, slip off in the airport when they're doing that security thing. Oh, and I don't go past the um, the x-ray thing. I don't go, I, I, they have to pat me down and warn me or whatever it is, right? Or, I, one time I did that and they tried to teach me a lesson, but I tried to really delay, 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 so I missed my flight, but then I didn't. It, it didn't work with them, so I wear I, I, I wear those because when you're traveling, people look at they look at your feet to see if you uh, have a person of means, right? I pull the old man stuff all the time. Okay. And now, now I don't travel. I don't I don't do jewelry anyway, but you know I don't know watches and stuff like that. No, nothing, nothing, nothing like that. So I don't so I don't become you know because when you're traveling, especially especially with American American accent, then what happens is people you don't know wherever you're traveling. You become a dollar sign. <laughs> they look at you as a dollar sign. You know, what can I get out of this person here like that? And since I'm not a person, that means they don't have to go through that. One time I took a trip to, um, I was in, I was in, going to Brazil. Oh, I got to tell you this. I tell this story sometimes. I'm going to Brazil. I ended up, at the time I was doing a heavy vegetarian thing. I was doing capoeira. And it was, it was a capoeira. There's a bunch of people doing a, a capoeira thing down in, you know, in, in uh, uh, up up there in uh you know bahia santiago bahia and um i happened to be on this flight somehow i was hooked up with these middle class black folks that were like they were vegetarian <laughs> i don't know how, how this worked and um so we was going what in fact one of the people on the trip was uh was miss gregory you know dick gregory's daughter named miss right but i didn't talk to her enough like that because she seemed kind of trouble you know she's like oh, sorry not approaching but but I, we wasn't really with that group but they were like middle class but was was so confounding, so weird. They would go, they're there in Brazil, and then they would go to, you know, they would go to the market or whatever have you, and they would try to be bargaining with these people for some sort of trinket or whatever have you. Meanwhile, they're dripping with gold. <laughs> these middle class people, that they're, they're dripping with gold. If, can you imagine you're bending over to 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 haggle with somebody about some price? And you, the one chain you're wearing could feed that family for a year. It didn't make any sense to me. I just, uh, anyway, that's a little peeve, you know. In fact, that was a trip with it. There was this guy that was a, a principal of school, a private school, a private black school, whatever have you, and he didn't talk to white people. I don't know how he did it, but he didn't talk to white people. I don't know, you DC people have no idea what you're all about. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm packing up. Now, the three pieces of, well, the three medicines, the medicines, that, well, one's a supplement. The medicines have a lot of supplements here. I'll leave most of them. I'll look and see, put them in my travel bag, my med, my med, my med, my med bag. This I got from uh, Robos Rail. Robos Rail is a, um, 
how can I explain it? It's like a booze cruise for middle class people on a train. <laughs> I can't explain this thing. But it's like, whoa, very expensive. But whoa, man, you get your little cabin, you get your own steward. It's, it's the, it was the, it was the best food I ever had in my life. You know, what was it from, from Cape Town? I took the trip from Cape Town, Pretoria, Pretoria to uh, uh, Victoria Falls, uh, you know, whatever, up there in Zimbabwe. You know, it was a six day trip, something like that, with a layover in Pretoria. Um, so anyway, um, so I, that's why I guess but, but that was, oh, if you ever get the money, you got some, take Robos Rail, South Africa. They have different lines. I have to do another line one time, go up to Namibia and stuff like that. I don't know, something like that. Um, so anyway, but so, um, so, but the three important ones that I'll have is my, um, what do you call that? My, what do you call those people? Um, my blood pressure medicine, my B12 tablets, um, because of COVID, this is the thing for, for the lungs, whatever have you. And of course, I got my uh, blood thinner, blood thinner aspirin. Um, now I'll pack it away in my other thing. But what I'll do is I have this little thing here. Is I'll put like two two things each in this little pill lead thing that you carry with me, so that um, I don't have to uh, dig through my bag, uh, you know, in the in the morning or something like that as I'm traveling. Um, plus, there's a lot of there'll be some some um, what do you call it? Some supplements, you know. That I'll uh, that I'll leave. Uh, what is this? Apple zinc, pocket the aqua tablets. No. What is this? Oh, black seed oil. There'll be some that I take with me. Like I'll take the black seed. What's this? I guess citrus calcium with vitamin D. I don't know about that. I mean, I have to look at the expiration dates and see what see what I'll what I'll take. Expiration date uh, five twenty two. So the ones that say 22, I'll leave them here. If I need any kind of supplements, I just buy them in South Africa. Um, like that. Um, uh, what's this? Oh, elderberry. Of course, it's liquid, so I'm not going to take that. Let me add that to my little elderberry to my uh, drink right there. Hey, why not? Um, I don't know. What else? What else? What else I have to tell you? So that's uh, that's traveling. I told you I'll wear, my, I'll wear this hat. Got this in India. Had different colors, blue, black, something like that. It's the only one that survived. I gotta go back there one of these days. Um, of course, I'll always I'll carry a wet cloth, my cloth with me, but this will go in a, in one of these things here. Keep it wet. Oh, oh, this is important. Remember, I tell you, after I travel, uh, I travel like I don't have nothing, which I don't have anything. But this is a very good backpack, but um, but I keep this is my New York backpack. I leave this here in New York. I keep this backpack anyway. And I use this one here. Oh, by the way, this is my COVID negative test VA. Why don't you just love the VA? Oh, you don't want no socialized medicine? Socialized medicine, VA. But you have to know how to work the system. Anyway, took the test on, on uh, Sunday morning. And uh, so I picked it up today, well, yesterday, Tuesday. And so it'll get me through the airport, get on the plane, whatever have you. Um, but this is the bag that I, my backpack that I carry uh, like that. Certainly essentials in it like that, whatever it is. Um, and it's not, you know, I can't say it's not, it's a good backpack, but, you know, sort of, say, raggedy or whatever it is. Um, but uh, again, I do it because... You know, you don't want to be a target, right? Which reminds me also, I know a lot of you people, when you go on vacation, again, the reason why I don't wear, uh, bring a lot of clothes or whatever have you, because wherever I go anyway, they should do this anyway. I used to go to a warm climate. Yes, I go to Mexico all the time or whatever. And what I, what you do is you wear one basic outfit, right? When you get there, you buy the clothes of that area. You're going to buy a T-shirt, you know, even toothpicks, you know what I mean? You know, you, toothbrush, whatever, you buy from that area. And then when you leave, you know, you're only there for three weeks if you if you, if you got that, you know, you leave the stuff there. Give it to an orphanage or something like that. I did that in Brazil. Oh, they love me for that. Anyway, um, leave that there. You go back with the clothes you came with. You know, there's no need for, you know, and you support the local economy and local people. Huh? Okay. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Oh, um, I'm leaving several glasses here, but this is my travel glasses. Uh, these are prescriptions. It's got a removable 
uh, you know, the removal of those shades there. Anyway, um, so these are my glasses I carry. Plus, I got glasses down home in South Africa. Oh, masks. Uh, these are some fancy masks, whatever. Um, but I'm bringing with me, but that's not what I'm going to wear uh, on the plane. See, the plane now, because remember, you, you're you um, in a plane, you do that recycle air, especially if you're a coach, you know what I mean? The first class, they breathe, and they recycle air. So I got special uh, masks that I'll use as standard and active carbon filter. I'll use, I'll use, was there something mask around here? I think it's two masks, three masks. I don't know. Only wearing it for the plane and for, and for the uh, transport, or three filters, uh, large, because that fits me. Um, uh, because I'll be going to C uh, Cape Town and then. I'll be going, usually I take a taxi to Alice, but what I'm going to do, I have to stop by at Makana or the uh, East called Grahamstown. I see a, a journalist friend of mine. And so I'll, what I'll probably do from Cape Town, I'll actually take the bus, take the Greyhound, the bus, you know, I'll take the bus to um, uh, Makana or for you all would know it as, as Grahamstown, that kind of sort of Rose University. I'll spend a night, a couple of days there. And then, uh, hey, Maybe, hopefully my wife will join me there, or maybe uh, meet her in King, or something like that. But then I go to King Williamstown, then I go to Gaza. It's, it's, it's a long thing. Then finally, I'll somehow, we'll hook up. Okay. So what else I tell you? So, so that's that's the little travel hints. A little, you know, I'm happy. You're happy because now you got some hints how to travel. How to travel. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, the other thing I'm doing... Uh, because it's air, airports, airplanes, whatever, you have good toilet facilities. So I will take the last of my uh, Dr. Mission, which is a, uh, a colon cleanse, right? But I'll take this at the airport, okay? Colon cleanse at the airport. Um, uh, and uh, what did I order? My, f my food, I get it. I got, uh, if, you, if you get a special meal, usually when they... Hand out the food, they'll give it to you. They'll give you the special they hand out first, you know. So, I'm not going to do no the commercial stuff. So I ordered, uh, they didn't have Asian vegetarian, I or Hindu vegetarian, or Hindu, whatever. I got Hindu, I got a Hindu Hindu meal on Kenya Air. Um, anything else I got to tell you? Nah, well, whatever, you know. Oh, you know. oh my nut mix. Oh, that's right. Um, uh, I always take a nut mix with me, just in case, you know. Walnuts, uh, shell, pistachios, almonds, uh, what's that, Some macadamia nuts, I guess, and uh, of course, my cashews, I love cashews, so that's what I'll do there, bunch of masks, this is my last album book night, okay, that's it, look, I don't want to, I don't want to bore you anymore, this is just helpful hints from me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect.